Way back in 2007, we kicked off our YouTube career with a handful of short clips showing a scratch-built Navy destroyer model firing rockets from an onboard launch pad. That boat, hastily slapped together from inexpensive doorskin plywood over a decade ago, would sprout ever more elaborate missile systems over the years, but it always bore the same mishmash design, a conglomeration of several ship types from several eras mixed together. Well, it's 2016 now, and it's time for a change. Much as the U.S. Navy sometimes does with its older ships, we've decided to put the 702 through a process called Fleet Rehabilitation and Modernization, or FRAM. Join us as we convert our no-name missile boat into the Sumner-class destroyer USS Hank. One of our biggest reasons for modernizing this model was to bring it to the same scale as our USS Kitty Hawk aircraft carrier, a somewhat oddball 1-81. to That meant extending her from 40 inches to 56 inches, an increase in length of 40%. Doing that was frightening in execution, but pretty simple in practice. We found the ship's widest point and cut her in half with a hacksaw. That gave us room to insert a hull extension, also doorskin plywood, which we bonded to the bow and stern using simple wood glue. At the same time, we took the opportunity to give the squared-off transom a more authentic look with a rounded basswood planton. A few layers of paint later, we had ourselves an extended hull. Then came time to fill that hull with some updated components. The original model used one electric motor to spin a single five-bladed propeller. The redesigned Hank uses twin motors made it to dual three-bladed screws each with a dedicated rudder for added maneuverability. The RPMs of each shaft can be varied via electronic speed control, and there's even a prop guard on each side of the hull to protect the propellers against pier and tugboat strikes, but mainly just to look cool. The actual radio control is made possible by a tactic receiver, whose antennas pick up signals from a frequency hopping transmitter. As you can see from the labels, this transmitter is on loan from our Kitty Hawk model. And the whole boat is powered by two 7.4-volt LiPo batteries wired in parallel. Let's head back topside. The longer hull called for a longer main deck as well, which was fabricated new from the same plywood as the hull. The old superstructure was completely discarded, replaced with more accurate deck houses designed after hours of poring over old blueprints, videos, and first-hand photographs taken aboard the USS Hank. Everything mounted upon that superstructure is also brand new, from the taller and more elaborate mast to the twin smokestacks. The stacks were cut from a length of aluminum tubing and squeezed in a vise to give them an elliptical cross-section before being topped with carved basswood caps. Little details like the thin laminate planton paddles and ECM antennas would be added later. While the redesigned Hank loses the distinctive missile launchers of its predecessor, there's plenty of simulated weaponry to take its place. This mainly takes the form of the three 5-inch twin gun mounts, each one carved from teak and aircraft plywood and incorporating 19 separate pieces. Now, on a real destroyer, those turrets would get their fire control information from the director mounted at the top of the superstructure, whose radar dish on our model is fashioned from a piece of pine closet rod. Anti-aircraft guns port and starboard handle smaller targets, with scale provided by ballpoint pen springs on the rifle barrels. And anti-submarine warfare is a three-pronged affair, from the hedgehog launchers up forward, to the rotating torpedo launcher amidships, to the depth charges back aft, all of them scratch-built from aircraft plywood and birch. The depth charge rack actually serves double duty as a handle for the aft hatch, which provides access to the steering gear. One big shortcoming of the older model was its sheer sides up forward, which gave it a very narrow foredeck. To remedy this on the refit, we constructed a new section of bow decking using 132nd plywood left over from the construction of our steam launch Iolair. Bondo putty was used to fill the space between the new deck and the old sides, smoothed by hand with a credit card, and then painted to give the hull a more authentic flair. The final phase of construction came down to the details. This includes projects like the scratch-built smoke generator for the forward stack. This is a small box that uses an electric fan, a resistor, and some magic juice called fog fluid to produce a smoke-like vapor. Also built during this phase was the motor whaleboat, carved from a piece of cedar and featuring its own simulated rudder and propeller cut from copper sheet. 
Fun fact, the propeller shaft is a pin from a wristwatch band. The whaleboat lives on the O-1 deck level under a dedicated set of davits fashioned from aircraft plywood. The model also received an assortment of portals, hatches, bollards, and other plantons during the detail phase, including a blue tile paint job on the quarterdeck and the twin anchors, which were carved from basswood and were still being installed as this video went to YouTube. Same goes for the ship's markings, which were custom printed by our on-staff graphics expert, Jim, aka Video One. When all said and done, this was less a fram than a total rebuild. Less than 15% of the original ship remains, and her displacement has swelled 16% to 8.75 pounds. While she packs less of a punch now, with no actual weapons aboard, our redesigned USS Hank is now a more fitting tribute to her Sumner-class namesake. We'll see just how seaworthy she is during sea trials, currently scheduled for April 2016. Stay tuned to Rapid Nadion for updates, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss our other scale model projects coming later in the year. Till next time, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.